the Friday show. Today is just me. <laughs> just me running the Friday show today. Good morning, Rachel. Let me know you guys are, are here. I get to do the comments today. So you can hashtag Team Matt all you want and it's not going on the screen. I'm just letting you all know that right now. Let me make sure I can, oh, there we go. There we go. See, I got it. I got it. Good morning, Jen. Um, so go ahead and hashtag Team Jeanette, and I'll put them all on the screen today, hopefully, maybe, but sometimes I get so uh, sidetracked in my content that I, I'm not paying attention to the, to the comments, so I'll, I'll work on both today. Yesterday we spent the day, uh, I'm going to tattle on Matt, at the hospital, <laughs> he thought. He had a really long night the night before, and uh, what he thought was, well, we think kidney pains. Um, Good morning, good morning, good morning. There we go, Team Jeanette, Sean, thank you. Uh, oh, geez, I'm clicking them too fast. I gotta learn how to do the comments. Um, so he went in and they did the CT scan and the blood work and everything. It's not kidney stones. He doesn't have to pass any kidney stones, but they have no idea why there's so much pain. So he has not slept well the last two nights and uh, managing that so that was our day yesterday super fun everybody loves to sit at the hospital right um good morning you guys tessa good morning love uh seeing all of pumpkin's ribbons if you follow us on social media we posted a dog with a pile of agility ribbons in her mouth and that's tessa's pumpkin she does agility with and they're just a phenomenal team all right, today is a, a hot topic, uh, a much needed topic, something that we almost everybody has dealt with, and that is potty training a puppy. It, I'll be honest, it is one of my least favorite things to do, but I have some tips and tricks to make potty training much easier than uh, it, it can be. So there's a few mistakes we make so we'll talk about what you can do when you're bringing home a new puppy just to get these puppies potty trained as soon as possible like we all like we all want good morning jean your poor guys have spent too much time at the hospital lately oh my gosh i know i do too i hope he feels better we thought maybe it was super dehydration you know he is a uh, uh, a police officer and works outside in this extreme intense heat it's insane and a lot of the guys um, at the department have been dealing with severe kidney pain because of dehydration and heat and so but the blood work look, looked fine on that either he wasn't severely dehydrated so who knows i don't know hopefully he'll be uh feeling better we have a go home day tomorrow so um hopefully he'll be back up and buzzing around Good morning from the Wild Turkey Distillery. Are you guys still there? I saw pictures online. It looked uh, it looked nice. My pups come pretty much potty trained. Okay, so that is the goal because it's one of my least favorite things to do. So we do put them at a doggy door at four weeks old and teach them the concept of sleep inside, potty outside. Sleep inside, potty outside. But like I tell everybody, um, they're not potty trained. There's two really, really important things they absolutely do not know, and that's to hold it. Because when they go home, they have been up to that point just getting up and going potty whenever they need to. So whether that's 3 a.m., they toddle outside, they go potty, they come back in because they're at a doggy door. So they don't know how to hold it, and they don't know how to tell you they have to go potty. So that's fairly common with any puppy you bring home that they're lacking those skills. So you have to teach them. You have to teach them, look, you have to hold it. That's number one. Number two, you have to tell me when you have to go and what that looks like will depend on what you need and want from your puppy. And three, you have to teach them and show them where you want them to go potty, right? Like we forget that. We just think, well, they can just go outside and then we're mad because they're potting on the patio or they're potting in the grass and we want the grass kept clean so our kids can play in the grass. Um, so think about a designated potty area and then um, you know make sure that you're teaching them that. But we'll start at the top and we'll go through um, some of my notes about making potty training as easy as possible. I see Jen giving little uh, little tidbits of our healing hearts. There is something else going on this weekend. Um, we will be packing up and heading out for another healing hearts giveaway. So watch social media over the next 
several days, uh, we will be doing another surprise giveaway. So I can't, of course, tell you where we're going or any of those fun details. We'll be giving you hints along the way on Instagram stories, and I'll try not to blow it. I had a few close calls last time. Uh, so making sure that we keep you updated, but not give away too much. It's not the easiest thing to do. I'm not the best at it. So uh, I had to sometimes run things by Jen, my coordinator, and be like, okay, I'm not saying too much, am I? Um, good grief. Jennifer, I have a deck right outside the back door. I was planning on carrying puppy out to lawn at first so they know grass is where to potty, then work on them getting from door across deck and down the stairs to the grass, hoping they can master it. No accidents on the deck. Yeah. Um, those that live in apartments or have a deck where there's lots of stairs with a new puppy, it, it is a greater challenge and you've got to figure that out either by carrying or teaching them stairs. But you know, an eight week old puppy can't hold it for that long. So I even say like if they're sleeping upstairs and in their kennel next to you, I say carry the kennel down the stairs if you can put it right up to the back door initially, open the back door and say, you know, go outside, go outside. So we start teaching them, you gotta go through this threshold to go out and go potty. And then over time, you just move the kennel farther and farther away from the door. So they learn to hold it. Cause usually at the very beginning, you have three steps. They take three steps and squat. That's not a lot of time. So you wanna slowly teach them, you've gotta hold it from your kennel to the door and it's gonna get farther and farther away. So then they learn like run to the door. A eight week old puppy typically can hold it for four hours. That's kind of the, you know, the, the time frame. And then after that, it's about an hour each month old. Um, some eight week old puppies will hold it for six hours at night. Some have a heck of a time holding it for four hours. So every puppy is different and it just depends um, how long they wanna hold it. Like even for us, some humans can hold it longer than others. And especially those of us that have had babies um, are of our own, our bladders are not as, as reliable and sturdy as they once were. All right, puppies potty a lot. So if you kind of know when to expect the pee pee coming or the poop coming, uh, that can help always when they wake up. That should be an absolute no brainer. Immediately you could go outside and depending how far you are from the door, they need to go potty out. Um, will depend if they can, you can start teaching them to walk or if you have to carry them. Keep it really, really consistent initially, the same door. Like if you've got different doors in your house, like one of your master room and then the back door, don't sometimes take them out the master room because it's easier for you and out the back door. Like way too confusing initially. That's stuff that can be done later. So stick with just the back door. Even if that means at 2 a.m. you gotta walk around to the back door, um, keep it completely and utterly consistent initially. So when they wake up, they have to go potty right in the middle of play, you know, they'll stop and some will give you some warning and they'll start smelling and kind of spinning in a circle, like whoop, let's get them outside. Um, and of course, after eating and drinking. So it's many times throughout the day they have to go potty. Again, some puppies will hold it longer and some the minute they feel like they have to go potty, they wanna potty. So it just depends um, exactly how many times a day. People have asked me, well, how many times are they gonna pee a day? Like, I don't I don't know, it depends on the puppy, I'm sorry. It depends if you leave water down all the time and, they, and they're drinking a lot. If you start having lots of piddle accidents, I say start moderating their water and not leaving it out all of the time and so you can get them on a really strict schedule. Hey, well, this is when they eat and drink, so this is when they should have to go potty. Um, so that's another thing you can do too is moderate the, good morning, Tina. Good morning, good morning. Moderate their water intake by picking up their water. All right, so puppies need to learn how to hold it, how to tell you, and where they need to go. So think about those three things before taking home a puppy on how you're going to accomplish that. Be consistent with where they're going to go initially. Tools to help potty training. Investing in some of these tools makes a huge difference. Number one, kennel training. There's lots of reasons to kennel train. One, it aids in potty training. Puppies do not like to potty where they sleep. If there's enough space to sleep here and potty right next to it, that's okay, like I don't have to lay in it or step in it. So you don't want too large of a kennel that they could sleep on one side and potty on the other. Um, so kennel training is super uh, effective in potty training. 
because you can control and monitor time and where they're going and what they're doing. Bells, let me show you. I love the bell concept, but I will tell you that they out, wrong way, they outsmart the bells really quickly. But initially, you're going to hang the bells on the door. You can get these at Chewy, PetSmart, Amazon, Petco. Just type in bells for potty training and they'll come up. Um, you'll hang them on the door and you have to initially ring the bells and then open the door because you're teaching your puppy when the bells ring, the door opens up. Like this is magical, right? So ring and open the door. Ring and open the door. Make sure you're naming it. Let's go outside, go outside. Um, another thing about naming the behavior is if, you're, if your puppy's sniffing and smelling outside and you're standing there saying, go potty, go potty, you're actually naming and t naming the sniffing go potty. And then you wonder why your dog sniffs forever to go to the bathroom because you probably, tr you could have quite possibly trained them to do that. Don't say go potty until they actually do it. So you want your puppy to do the uh, activity or the, um, you know, go potty or sit, do the command, name it and then reward it. So wait until they're actually going potty. And I know it, you, you feel dumb. I do. I still do. And they're going potty. And then I'm saying, go potty, go potty. Good boy. Good girl. Go potty. I'm naming it as they're doing it. And that will make sense to them. And then you can reward. I just do verbal praise and I'm like, yay, you're so amazing. And they look at me like I'm crazy. Like, uh, all I did was pee, but okay, mom, whatever. Like, if you want to have a party about me peeing, then go ahead. I'm like, yes, I do. I want to have a party about you peeing because you peed outside. Um, and then they'll start to understand that there's no party when they potty inside. Um, the party is outside that you praise. And you can do treats. Some people do. So the bells, they'll learn that when those bells make noise and they'll start to hit it with their nose or their paw, and you got to get to the door because you're the actual magic door opener, right? That uh, ringing the bells opens the door. So it helps aid in potty training. Just know dogs, our dogs for sure, most dogs are very, very smart and they learn to manipulate you through the bells. <laughs> They learn that if you're sitting and watching TV, the bells get you up and come to them so that they can control you through the bells. When it gets to that point, the bells can come down and you can start teaching them um, to, to sit at the door uh, quietly and wait or whatever. Good morning, Colleen. Hi from Vegas. Good morning. Good morning. How about an hour... How about on the drive home? We have a nine hour drive back to the California coast. So there's a couple different things you can do for the drive home. Um, some people will bring potty pads or something for them to potty on. And if they have a truck or an SUV, they'll have them try to go potty in the back of a vehicle. That can be a little difficult. They wanna play with the potty pads and they get distracted. Um, but that ensures that they're not exposed to parvo or distemper or anything, you know, dangerous on their way home because they're not fully vaccinated. You can also, I'll say, um, just ran at a random spot, pull off on the side of the road, walk way off the road, put your puppy down, not on a leash. It's going to be distracting initially. They're going to stay right by you. They're going to chase your feet and chew and smell and then potty. Um, and then you can pick them up and put them back in the car. The goal is, and I always have to ask myself, what are the chances that another dog has been in this spot and pooped? I think the chances are really low. So I'm not stopping at the Wendy's parking lot in the grass. I'm not stopping at a rest area because of course there will have been dogs there. I'm stopping at a random place on the side of the road, walking off the road a little ways, putting my puppy down and letting a potty. So it depends what you feel comfortable with. You may have to stop a few times for a nine hour trip. But I also let my clients know, don't wake a sleeping puppy, get them all settled in, make sure you have a full tank of gas, you've got food in the car, so you don't have to stop unless the puppy needs to stop. And if they sleep, just keep driving. They could make it four or five hours, so it may only be one stop. Good question though, yes. Okay, so we talked about kennel training, we talked about bells are super helpful. The number one mistake people make when potty training, when trying to potty train, when they take their puppy home is they give them far too much space. 
An eight week old puppy cannot, it will take a long time and there'll be lots of accidents, potty train to a whole entire house. That is way too big for them and they forget and they get distracted and busy and playing and they forget where they're supposed to go or they honestly they don't care because there's enough space in the house that they can easily poop and pee right here and not have to sleep too close to it or eat too close to it at all. There's way too much space. I strongly suggest that you fence off an area by the door that the puppies will be going out. And I would just solidify and lay that foundation immediately. This is where you go out. This is how you ask to go out. I've got the bells. And this is when you do go out where you go potty. Go with them and show them where they go. We train our puppies on pine chips and we send home a little bag, you know, sprinkle where they tinkle so they have that scent. So you can take that scent to the side yard or wherever you want them to potty, off the patio, off the pool deck, right? With all the dogs pooping and being right next to the pool. Um, or if your kids play and it's our little playground area and you have toddlers, you don't want them pooping or peeing anywhere around there. So we still, we're, we're still potty training to the outside as well of where you're allowed to poop and pee. Um, and if you have a female dog, you may not want them potting on the grass because they'll leave dead spots on the grass as well. So find a designated potty spot for them. We have our clients sprinkle the chips, just sprinkle where they tinkle to, so they understand they know that scent. Oh, this is where I potty. It will just help uh, signify, identify where you want them to go potty. Take them out where you want them to go. If you give too much space in the home, it just takes a lot longer to potty train. We even recommend using fencing. Just make sure the slats are vertical. Let me show you. Because, oh, wow, that picture. Here we go. Look at that. So do you see how the slats are vertical? Do you know why that is so important? because puppies will climb the fencing. <laughs> so my little curriculum fencing, people will go and buy that. Don't buy that, they climb out of it in two seconds. And as soon as, as soon as they do it once and learn that they can, it's over, you're done, they will climb. The other thing about fencing like slats, why I don't like metal kennels is because the dogs have gotten their jaws and teeth stuck in the kennel and it has been deadly for some dogs if they break their jaw too bad it i you know it's really difficult for them to recover so um you know really make sure that you've got safe fencing and you're not actually giving them a ladder to climb over i highly highly suggest fencing whether it's larger fencing that goes up against a wall or by the back door so you're fencing them off in your home like we have our toddler stalls or you're putting baby gates or fencing especially if you have an upstairs please put a baby gate at the bottom there is no reason a puppy needs to be upstairs at this point you have to potty train separately for the upstairs as well so let's let's get them potty trained to downstairs first doors closed fencing done um, and then as they earn, as they're ringing those bells, they're going right out to the right potty spot outside. So I've already accomplished, they know how to tell me they have to go out. They know exactly where to go out outside. They've got that down. Let's give them more space inside. And then if they start having accidents, that's your cue. Too much space too soon. Let's make a little bit smaller. The other thing I love about containment initially is you're laying the foundation um, and preventing a lot of problems. They can't chew on your couch if they're contained. They can't chase your kids. They can't chase the cat. They can't have accidents. They can't be chewing on things and getting into mischief. And then you're not trying to fix things. So being able to really control the environment initially and lay that foundation with the puppy, I feel is highly, highly beneficial. All right, so we've got them fenced off. We've got our bells hung if you wanna do the bells. Um, a lot of people said, well, should I just get a doggy door? Will that make my life easier? Absolutely, it will make your life easier. However, you're not truly potty training with the doggy door. They do not learn that they have to tell you they wanna go out and they do not learn to hold it. And those are two really important concepts that every dog should have. And especially if you wanna travel with them or take them places, they need to know both of those things. So if you, like I have a doggy door, my dogs use the doggy door, but they were potty trained first. So I say 
put in the hard work, party train your puppy, teach him to hold it, teach him to tell you, and then later you can add the doggy door in or you know open it up and teach them and show them, hey, here's the doggy door now, like you've earned this um, by learning the appropriate behaviors on where to go potty and how to go potty <laughs> to tell me you gotta go potty. Okay, carpets and rugs. Why do puppies insist on peeing on every stinking carpet? There could be tile all over and they pee on the one little tiny rug for two reasons really. One, because scent uh, is contained in a rug much better. There's no way to really clean it unless it is a washable one. And two, something very magical happens. And why puppies will pee on their bed too, because it disappears. They don't have to step in it. It's clean, right? Like this is life changing. It's magical. Did you just see this bed? It sucked up my pee, man. Like, look at this. This is so cool. So if they pee on their bed, they've lost their bed for now. No, sorry, dude. You clearly don't know what this is for and how to uh, treat your bed respectfully. We don't pee or poop or chew on the bed. And if they can't handle that yet, they need to lose that privilege. Puppies should earn everything. I do love the elevated caranda beds. Our puppies understand that, you know, before they go home, but they do love the soft cushiony beds, but you have to make sure and, and let your puppy earn that as well. Um, and then rugs, pick up any rugs, fence them off of rugs. That's why especially not only our puppies situational, so being potty trained upstairs is, is like a whole different house. It's a whole different part of the den. Plus it's typically all covered in carpet. So you've got two hurdles to overcome when potty training upstairs. All right, um, the other thing, a lot of puppies are not taught and practiced to potty on a leash. And I think that that is incredibly beneficial so that when you do take your puppy out uh, in public, they learn to potty on command because see, you've already been going out and saying go potty when they're actually potting. So they understand go potty now, right? So you've taught the command correctly, not for sniffing. Um, and then being able to go potty on a leash. There are a lot of dogs, embarrassingly so, that will refuse to potty on leash and refuse to potty anywhere but home. So as soon as we get the foundation that they're nicely potty trained, they know where to go in the grass in your backyard, it's important that you make it a point, you know, first thing in the morning or right after a nap or when you know your dog has to go potty to take them out on a leash out in the front yard, go take them on a walk, find a potty spot, tell them to go potty and have them practice going potty on a leash um, and in a different space, please. It, it, it's, uh, it's really difficult to break once a dog is so firmly set, especially our poodles, and I can only potty in this space in my home and they're holding it for eight to 10 hours when you take them to go do something. We've got puppies being bathed and mad about it. I don't know if you can hear on the authors. They're getting blow dried and they're protesting a little bit. We have to go home tomorrow. All right, um, situational training. So we talked about upstairs, on a leash, and new places. So make sure that you practice all of those. Potty on command, teach them to potty on command. Doggy doors make it easier, but they're not necessarily potty trained. Anybody else have any other uh, tips for potty training? Go ahead and put those down so that people can see. All right, rubbing their nose in it. The old school way when a puppy has a accident is to rub their nose in it, right? Like so puppy goes potty um, and, hold on one second. Puppy goes potty and we want them to know that they did something wrong. There's a couple different flaws in this theory. So back in, in my day too, people would rub their nose in it and put them outside. The problem is if you don't actually catch them doing it, you can't correct them for something. You have three seconds to either lay out a consequence and let a puppy know this is not acceptable or reward them. You only have three seconds is all. So if, if you see a puddle of pee on the floor, there's nothing you can do about it but clean it up and make sure you use a cleaner that gets all of the scent off of the tile or the floor. You have to look at it from a puppy's point of view. If you rub their nose in it, they literally are like, 
Are you dumb? I know what my pee smells like. Why are you rubbing my nose in it? Do you know what my pee smells like? I do. Like they have no idea. And now you're becoming an unpredictable, unreliable leader. So please, there is no foundation. There's like rubbing your dog's nose in it only makes things worse. You become, you, you look like an idiot. They Trust me, they know what their pee smells like. That is not helping at all. So unless you actually catch a puppy going potty on the floor, um, you can't correct them. Like you just, you have to be no nonsense about it. I don't even make a big deal of it. It's my fault. I clean it up and I promise to do better. I try to figure out how did I miss this? Did I give them too much space? Did I forget to take them out? Um, did I forget to remind them to, you know, go out, whatever. It, it's always a reflection on me and I missed it and it's my fault. So we clean it up, no nonsense, and I do better next time. So that is the goal. So love your philosophy. It makes raising a puppy so much easier. Yes, of course, Karen. All right. Uh, thank you for tuning in. So no more rubbing noses in their poop or their pee. Trust me, they know what it smells like. And that means nothing to them other than making you look like an idiot. All right. Okay. And if you don't catch them in the act, like we just said, you can't correct them. You can't scold them. You've missed the opportunity. Um, and puppies definitely, I know Dana, Team Jeanette solo today, since Matt wants to, you know, have some kidney pain. <laughs> uh, he was all researching and he's like, if I have to pass a kidney stone, it's like as bad as having a baby. I'm like, I don't know where this is coming from, but I guess a lot of people do say that. Um, but he does not, apparently he does not have any kidney stones, so he does not get the... The joy of being able to pass a kidney stone this time anyway all right anybody else have any other tips and tricks for potty training your puppy but as a review remember good morning boo good morning. Should my good potty training you want to come over here and say I hi the best thing shot me and toby oh you do okay come show us why why you guys are putting potty training stuff jenna's got done with her writing lesson Oh my gosh, let me this show one everybody. Is the original. Okay, let me show. Yeah, well. Hi. <laughs> Here's this morning. This is what <sighs> she's out screwing around doing on her horse. Look at that. It's so incredible. Oh my gosh, we're talking potty training. Oh, oh yeah. Our, our favorite Speaking thing to do. Training. Speaking yeah. of potty training, yeah. We fence off in our house and teach. Um, yes, we do. Yeah, so it depends on your house, how to fence it off and how to do it, but, and then constantly reminding them, make it positive, make it fun, yeah. have your little party when they go potty outside. If you miss it inside, what do we do when we miss them going potty inside? Nothing, I mean. <laughs> Nothing, just clean it up. Anything, yeah. Can't do anything, clean it up and do better next time. That's right. All right, let's see if we have any questions. Did you want to pull up a chair and hang out with me? Here we go, Team Jenna. That's right. Yeah. Jeez, she's crazy. Come over and help Mama do the Friday show. I don't have Daddy. You're out screwing around on your horses. I'm back there. You're back, yeah. Did you have a good ride? Yeah. Got your riding boots on. You're a mess. <laughs> oh my gosh, in my house. Well, my floor is filthy. There you go. Oh my goodness. There. Awesome jump, yes, it's incredible. Her and Toby are super crazy amazing. And it's tough right now because um, it's hotter than heck, so class yeah. classes are it's tough. Early. It's Yeah, she gets up at 5.36 a.m. and does her horse lesson so that she can ride, um, or she's out messing around with them <laughs> late at night because it's a little bit cooler but the, the heat here I don't still... ride at night I just bring them out either for walks or I bring them in the mud puddles <laughs> yeah well so we have those like monsoon those summer storms here and so it's still we still have standing water around the house and so yeah. she's been oh yeah get your pictures she's <laughs> been bringing her horses through the mud playing with them Oliver loves it Toby's not so sure about it Toby did it what about crate training puppy? How do you get through those first nights That's without Toby. caving? Yeah, there's Toby in the mud. I can show a picture of all of you. That's a good question. So kennel training, um, it's just like humans with babies. 
If you let them cry for 30 minutes and then let them out, you're literally training them that mm, mom says I have to scream for 30 minutes and then I get let out. That's not what we wanna teach them. So with kennel training, you wanna make sure I pick up food and water three hours before bedtime. So we make sure we've got an empty bladder and empty tummy. And then make sure they've pottied, pee and poop. We've exercised. We have met all of their mental and physical needs. They are tired. They are ready for bed. And I'll give them even a little, an ice cube or something because they've been, we've been playing and training and, you know, just a little bit of water uh, so that I know they're not dry and thirsty. And then in the kennel they go. Now they're going to protest. They're going to protest being contained. They're going to protest not being with you. Um, however long that protest is depends on how assertive and confident your puppy is. Um, how long that will be, you have to let them, whether it's one hour of crying, 10 minutes of crying, you have to let them cry it out. At some point, they will go to sleep. They will. They will go to sleep, right? Yep. Let I let them sleep for as long as they want, but when they wake up again, whether it's one in the morning or two in the morning, I have to assume they have to go potty because remember, they, they haven't been taught to hold it and they haven't been taught to tell me. So we're doing that right now in kennel training. I have to assume, okay, they're telling me they have to go potty and they've held it up to that point. You take them outside, let them smell. As soon as they potty, say go potty, go potty, reward, puppy party, love, praise, but not a big to do, no playing, not a lot of cuddling because then you're teaching your puppy, wake me up at one and mama will play with you and cuddle you. Uh -huh, uh I don't want to get up at one o'clock and cuddle and play, all right? So uh, back in the kennel, matter of fact, name it, kennel. Good yep. boy, good girl, go to bed. Now they're going to protest all over again. It typically takes three nights, three nights of quite a bit of protesting and they're trying to figure you out and they, the, what you want them to learn after three nights is, this is where I sleep. <laughs> like, yep. it, it, screaming and protesting gets me nowhere no so about three nights and then before you know it they just know go in the kennel um and into bed you want to show us yeah. oliver yeah. yeah there's oliver the glare is so funny i know that's her old retired rodeo horse then she decided she wanted to be a jumper and we got toby <laughs> toby for that yep it's been years since I had a puppy, so I'll be trying kennel training this time. I do recall that potty training was easy compared to keeping them off the couch. Yeah. I mean, you just have to make it like anything the minute they put their paws on the couch. The problem is we correct too late. We wait until the dog is all the way up on the couch. Really spend the time and watch as soon as they put a paw up or kind of think about it. Think about it or put a paw up. That's when you correct. We always... It, it is one of the biggest mistakes we make in dog training is we correct too late. Mm -hmm. Our dog is already barking at another dog and then we correct. No, you need it to correct the minute your dog saw the other dog before the barking happened. That's what makes sense to a dog. While you're telling them to be quiet when they're already barking, you're actually now barking with them in, in the way they see it. So it has to be, uh-uh, no, corrected right when they saw the dog because you know what's gonna happen in one more second. The barking will start or the reactivity will start. So the minute they look at the couch, ready to get up on the couch, you'll see it if you pay attention. You'll see they have the thought, oh, I wanna get up on the couch correct that and prevent them from getting up on the couch. You're gonna to have to body block, you'll have to take, pull them back off the couch. Yes. Then, then you're not done. You think you're done, but you are not done and this is the problem. Then you get in between the couch and the puppy and you stand your ground. You just stand there and you body block. If they try yep. to go past you to get on the couch, uh, use your body, uh-uh, I said no. And you stare them down that is speaking to them in a way that makes sense. You cannot stop until they take a deep sigh. You'll see it. Or they yep. look away. Yep. Or they kind of like, you're like, oh, okay. Or they just fine. walk away. Or they walk away. Then you can too. But be ready. They're not dumb. They're going to wait till you walk away. And what are they going to do? They're going to go get back up on that couch again. But you're watching because you're training. <laughs> you, training takes time, so you're just waiting. Go ahead and do it again, dude, so we can get this out of our system, right? Like, I'm I'm thinking 
I'm literally thinking, I hope they turn around and do it again so I can just yeah. take care of this today. Oh, yeah. So we don't have to deal with it. Maybe once tomorrow, but the very first time, it could be three or four times tomorrow, half that. By day three, your dog should not be mouthing you anymore, should not be trying to get on the couch. Every once in a while they will, but the minute you're like, ah, no, get off the couch. Get in between you and the dog, stare them down, back them back up off the couch, wait till they relent. Okay, fine, mom needs business. All right, I'll lay on the floor, fine, if you say so. You're like, yes, I did, thank you. <laughs> I did say so. Boom. It has to be done when they think about it. Up on the couch, it's too late. Yep. It's too late. You have to it, stop yeah. them from getting up on the couch. That alone will make all the difference in the world. Yep, 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 yep. yep. <laughs> barking with them, haha, I never thought of it that way. It is, that's what they think. They're like, oh yeah, mom's barking at me, barking too. We both are barking. Yes, we're actually promoting the behavior. We have to catch them before they actually do it. So if you know, the first time you're not gonna know. So like the first time they bark at a dog, now you know. Okay, I need to set up more situations to get them around dogs so I'm ready and paying attention and correct it before they bark, right? They bark at cars. Okay, now, I've, I, now I know I need to set up situations for training, right? Like we don't. We just expect dogs to do what they should do, and then we're like, well, now they're barking at cars. Oh, well. No, I not see, oh, so well. You need to guide emotional responses. You have to teach your dog to be neutral and to look at you. The other, the other way to do it, too, Sorry. is so you're just not going around correcting all the time and giving consequences is I know my dog's going to bark, let's say, at another dog. So then we're going to go out. I'm going to go to places I think we're going to run into other dogs. But I'm also going to start asking them to give me their focus. I'm going to have treats on me. <laughs> yeah. And when they say their name, because we've already been practicing this, we assume, right? Um, say their name, give them a treat. So they see a dog. I'm also going to, the goal is, is that when you see a dog, look at me, you get rewarded. I want to change the whole conversation about what it means to see a dog. Um, but I'm also I'm ready the minute if they want, the minute I think they're gonna bark, I will correct them. Then I'm gonna turn around and go right back into saying their name, rewarding, saying their name, for them looking at me. Don't reward them by staring at the dog. They have to look at me. So the ultimate goal is in a year, they see a big truck, they look at mama. They see a dog, they look at mama. Yes, good boy, look at you, that's a good boy. They know I will take care of it and that I am the focus. And when you do, your dog can only focus on one thing at a time. You want that to be you. You want that to be you. Your dog can only focus on one thing at a time. You have to lay that foundation that the focus is on me. I'm the treat dispenser. I'm the food dispenser. <laughs> I'm the love dispenser. Everything comes from me. You have to earn everything, but everything comes from me. And what also comes from me is if you're naughty, you're going to get scolded. And it's yes. going to be uncomfortable enough that you don't do it again. Now I'm fair. Now I'm consistent. Now I'm respected. Um, but I'm also the love and treat dispenser. <laughs> right? Yep. Yep. And the train and train Jenna loves to train and work with their dogs, but they do what she asks because they love they and respect her. Yeah. And they get treats and it's fun and she makes it fun, right? Yes. All right. Anything else about potty training? Even your rooster. I love him. He's so loud. Storm. Storm. All right. Show us one last cool picture before we gotta go. Um, another cool one we can do that one's good today that was a good I don't one think i know yeah we have to get flying. a girth we got to get a girth that's like wide like mm -hmm. the leather's wide because even regan said mm -hmm. he texts like so much he's gonna knock the wind out of him if he hits him yeah he's so, tucked um those are cute and i got a bunch i can do i can do for it since fast. it's a dog oh yeah show us him jumping can There's we show that really video big jump. yeah yeah, yeah. Okay, hold on. This is what she's teaching Forrest. Now that the wide one or the high one had his health testing and his hips are good. <laughs> like no jumping him until we get his health clearances because he's trying to uh, do the higher wide one. The wide one's kind of cool. She taught him jump higher or jump over wider, and so um, okay. she'll show you. Okay, watch this on command. See, she's standing and tells him over. Okay, show that again. I give him a chance. So she set up two jumps. And then she has taught him to, that took a while, like, because he wanted to follow her. And if she would step away from the jumps, boop, 
Look at that. Okay. <laughs> we can do wide, but oh, I need come to come because I can find it on TikTok. Okay, you can change oh, TikTok for a second. It's all right. And they can go. Did you put it on TikTok already? Yeah. Oh, they can go to TikTok and watch it too. Oh, sure. Oh. oh, this is the high one? Yeah, look yeah. how high this is. Jeez. This is a Forest Forest, born here, AKC Moyan Poodle, future sire. He said help tested and done. Yeah, Jenna's teaching him to be a jumper. Go check out. <laughs> Go check out. Jenna Go does the TikTok. TikTok. <laughs> Jenna's in charge of our TikTok. I tell her, I have to remind her, you do have to put some dogs on there. You know, like it is for a kennels <laughs> account. Um, but Jenna does the videos and puts them together. I think I posted like five things total, so it's all Jenna's deal. Let me pull up the. How do I pull up our name? It's 4E Kennels. Okay. You can just go to 4E oh, yeah, Kennels. Yeah, it's just 4E Kennels. Up. So just go to 4E Kennels on TikTok if you do TikTok and you can see what Jenna is up to. That's kind of her. She loves TikTok. <laughs> all right, you guys. Happy Friday. Have yes. a great weekend. I'll see you soon. Remember, follow along. We have another exciting giveaway over the next couple days. That's all I'll say. Yeah. Jenna will be staying here at the farm to take care yeah. of things. So hopefully, I told her last time too, send me pictures of what you're doing and I'll post it on stories so you see what Jenna's doing at the farm, what I'm doing off the farm. Um, but she gets so busy and forgets. I do. Will you do try better this time and I will. Us so I will. everybody oh. can see what you're doing while I'm gone? Send videos and stuff. Yeah, you're out working, you're doing your horses, you're out doing puppies, and I'm just, you know, having fun traveling. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> All right, everybody. I'm Jeanette with 4E Kennels. We're only changing breeding from bad to badass, but we are healing yes. hearts Change. and changing lives yes. through the power of a dog. Have a great weekend. Bye. Bye.